Uh, hey there, Russ here. Welcome back to the shop. Okay, today we're going to do um, a real rambling. In fact, this is probably going to end up being a two or three episode of ramblings. Because I'm going to try to keep it under 15 minutes. For us, but I got like nine different subjects that we're actually going to touch on. I think some of them you're going to find are really cool too. But you can pick your poison on this stuff and, that, and ignore the rest if you want. So first thing I want to do is I want to give you a quick idea about OTB thinking, which is really one of the things that my channel is based on, where I have, and I have done this my whole life. I look at things and I figure out how to do it better, faster, cheaper, or something. I always try to look for ways to improve how it's done or how it's made and that sort of thing. So it's just the way I kind of view everything in the world. And as a result, I really consider myself an outside the box thinker. I can take something and say, well, you know, if you do this or that, you actually make it better. So anyway, sometimes I think that gets on some people's nerves. I know you know who sometimes hates it when I watch her doing things like at the sink. And I'll say, well, why don't you do this or that? And then it'll be pulled together a lot easier. She really gets a little upset with me sometimes when I ask her that. So it's hard not to give suggestions. But I can take a suggestion. I'll be honest with you. I take suggestions all the time. In fact, most of my ideas that I end up doing, they actually were a play on from something that somebody said to me that started a process in my head. So OTB thinking is something that you kind of do all along and you never know where it's going to go. Let me give you some examples of some of the things that I'm doing here in the shop so you get an idea why in the last couple of weeks I haven't put out a video of that. I haven't accomplished anything to a point where I can show you something new per se. So... So I decided I'd just ramble for a couple of videos instead, and hopefully you'll enjoy this. So one of the first things I was thinking about the other day is that I was getting my drawer and I was getting some of these quarter-inch washers off. And as you know, in my shop at the hardware, I do tend to use one quarter 20 bolts as my theme for everything that is hardware. So all the stuff you can buy for one quarter 20 size bolts are things that I put into my hardware cabinet so that I have all the different things like lock nuts and washers and uh, uh, everything, you know, T-nuts. Anyway, everything's based on that quarter inch pretty mostly. The other day, I got into there and I saw I only had one washer left in there. And I went, uh-oh, I probably should get some more. And then it got me to thinking, well, you know me. So it got me to thinking, well, what happened if I had run out of these things and I didn't have any? What would I do? And I got to thinking about it more and more, and finally I decided, oh, it's obvious. Right there, I figured this this penny is is pretty much the same size as this as this washer. So I thought, why not take in a pinch, if I didn't have any, and I couldn't talk you know who to go to the store for me at eight o'clock at night, which I guess last time anyway she wouldn't. That's another story. But I took a penny and I drilled it out in the center to give me a nice little washer. And I actually don't see any reason why this does not replace this. And I thought that was kind of funny. Maybe I'll show that to the, the audience. So, but that's not the end of this. Just wait. So the next day, I realized, as I said, I only had one left. So I got on the uh, on the internet and I started looking around. And I realized that a box of washers, just these simple zinc plated washers, a box of a hundred, you're going to pay three dollars and sixty cents for it minimum that I have found out there. Now I can buy a thousand instead and save a little bit, but that means that I'd be, and that you're going to pay at least three point six cents a piece for these things. Three point six cents every time I use one of these things. How much do I have in this again? Oh, one penny. So, and it got me to think of this really kind of weird thought. You know what? I could go to the bank and buy 100 washers, quarter-inch washers, cheaper than I can at the hardware store. Because I can get a, a, two rolls of 50 pennies. And again, this is in America. So, uh, I'm sure there's something similar or comparable to you in other areas of the world. But I'm not familiar with them. But here, I could go to the bank, get, get two rolls of pennies, 50-cent rolls. And I have a hundred washers. So I just thought that was kind of weird. And it was just one of those LTB things that I did that I'll never do this probably. But if I did, 
I now know what I have to deal with. And I can tell you two things I learned about this real quick. First was this hole, you don't want to drill it in a penny. That is hard to do. Hard to stop it from spinning and trying to get that thing dead center. It's really a problem to do. Um, the easiest way that if you wanted to turn something round like that into a uh, washer, the way to do that is to set up a little punch with a heavy metal plate with the hole size that you want in it and a punch so you can punch that hole out. It's the only way to do it. And that wouldn't be too bad. And you could probably do 100 pennies pretty quick if you had that kind of punch set up somewhere in your shop. Uh, so, but am I going to do that? No. But if I needed a couple, I could probably make a couple pretty easy as a result. So, just a food for thought, emergency, LTB moment. So, that is just one of those things I was thinking about. And I thought, oh, I'll share that with you. I hope it was entertaining. The second thing you want to talk about is the BS joints. If you remember, the last video I did was about the toenailing um, BS joint. And for those of you that this is the first time here, a BS joint means bamboo skewer. And if you remember, I did a toenailing one. And this is the out. This is how it looks now that I finished it. I went ahead and had glued them in, and I glued. I sanded it down with my electric belt sander. And I will tell you right now. You see how they're all dark? That's what happens when you do that kind of sanding. And but it came out pretty good. I will say that it's not bad, and that that's an appearance that I can live with to get a super strong uh, butt joint. Because that is just a butt joint, but with all that dowel going on, that joint is actually pretty strong, I suspect. So, as proven in past videos on thinner material. But I wanted to also show you that if you look at this one, on this one, you see the three dots here that I did? And see how dark they are? I did this with the electric sander. But when I did those three, I sanded those out by hand. And look at the difference. So, uh, it, it, that told me that these bamboo skewers on the end grain, they burn real easy when you're sanding with an electric sander. So, if you sand with electric sander, you know you're going to get the burn one. And that's not bad. But it is end grain. So, it's going to be different than this most of the time anyway. Uh, and But you just have to think about that. So, if you're doing a finished product and you're going to know they're going to be exposed, you might want to think about whether you want to sand it down with an electric sander or with a card scraper or however you want to do it or with a plane hand plane could make a difference as to what it looks like when you're done so it really plays on those joints the other thing about the bs joints is i also talk about showing you an idea i have about taking the bamboo skewer joint and doing what i call a dry joint that you can put together with the bamboo skewers and you can take it back apart. So sometimes you want to put things together and make sure how they measure up and they fit. And then you got to take it back apart. This is one really cool way to do it. And I've been playing with it, but I'm not quite ready to give you a full uh, dog and pony show. So, but at this point, stay tuned. I haven't forgot about that. I do want to do that. So, and we're going, I'm going to show you how I have, done, what I've done with the, using the bamboo skewers to put two pieces of wood together in a dry joint. So, uh, the next thing I'm going to talk about real quick is surgical tubing. I've been playing with surgical tubing for some reason. If you remember, how many times have you seen a video on YouTube where they take a Band-Aid and put it on an F-clamp so that it does that automatically and it's supposed to pull it right back. Rubber bands, I'm going to tell you right now, they don't work very well at all. It's really not a very good idea. Although... You see, I've seen probably at least a half a dozen to a dozen of these videos showing you this trick. This is not the way to do it. This is where I, OTB thinking has got me. I took surgical tube. First thing I did is I took my F-clamp and I broke one of my most sacred rules. And that is I modified a tool. I usually try to do what I'm going to do with using it and enhance it. I try not to have to do something like drilling holes or cutting pieces off unless I have to. I try not to have to modify the tool. In this case, I decided it was worth it. I drilled two holes in the top at quarter inch holes and two holes in the bottom jaw quarter inch next to each other. The distance apart, or they don't have to be exactly in any particular place, you just want two holes. Now one of the things I learned about surgical tubing is this is a quarter inch dowel and I put the tip of it 
in my pencil sharpener and sharpened and tapered down and I cut it off about like that. So this tubing is then pushed up onto this uh, quarter inch dowel far enough that it goes past the taper and is pulled up onto the flat part at least 1 16th of an inch up onto it. And I do that on both of these after I put it through the hole, one on the upper, one on the lower jaw. So now I have this piece of rubber in between. So what that means is I can now take this and from here, I have that much tension to be able to one hand hook this up somewhere, as you've seen, like the rubber band idea was. But this thing actually goes a little further. Watch this. Let me show you a couple quick ideas here. So first off, so we're going from like six inches to four inches for the spring load with the tension like this. But you can adjust that. You can fine adjust that by turning your knob in a little bit. And now you can go down to this distance more. With that in mind, this is, I call this my fine adjuster for how much tension you want on it. But let's say I want to do a four inch. This box here is four inches here. So let's take this box. Let me get this out of the way. Let's take this box and we want to clamp to the outside edge here with something. So let's take something that we're going to put and clamp it to it. But we have to do it one hand here and one hand here. Well, that really isn't going to clamp very well. There isn't enough tension. So let's adjust the tension. Let me show you a couple of quick ways to adjust the tension so that the jaw will work within that range that you want it to. So first thing I want to do is I screw this out just about a half inch or something. Give me some threads so I can go both directions with this adjuster. Now I have these two here. If I want to go down to four inches, I pull it through and I just stick it, the wood part, through there on the one up there and I do the same thing on the lower jaw. I flip it over and I put the dowel through the hole. So it's coming in, the hose is coming in through the one hole and sticking onto the dowel and then the dowel is sticking in the other hole. What that's done is that's shortened up my uh, tubing. So now, look at that. Now it goes, this is getting pretty tight. You don't want to have it go much further than that when you're pulling it. But see where it goes now? So now I can take this with one hand, and if I need to, I can put this on here, hold my pieces, set this, whoops, my hand's not quite in the right place. And then I can set this on here with one hand, take the other hand, and I just drop that on there so that now I can tighten that up. And that is now holding right there. You can see it's actually holding onto it somewhat. So with the same hand, I could, while I'm still holding, I could take the other hand. So you can one hand tighten with an F-clamp using tubing instead of those silly ba um, rubber bands. But also, let's say that instead of coming four inches, suppose you want to go pretty much to the, close the jaw. Let's say I want to take this piece and I want to put it on here and glue it. To here now this one's a quarter this is a quarter so now i want to do that while i'm holding it so now i can take it so let's readjust this again pull it back to its normal position where it's just sticking out so now instead of going straight across into this hole i'm going to take this over and put it in the other jaws hole like that kind of pull back a little tension to give it slack to the other one now i'm going to take this one pull it out and cross it over and go it into the upper jaw. So these are crisscrossing. Then I make sure that the tension here between these two are kind of roughly the same. And if I have to, I can pull a little bit here or down here to adjust it. So it seems like I've got close to the same. This clamp is now ready to use to do a tight. And again, remember you got your fine adjustment that you can also do here. So let's take this and let's open that up about like that. Now when I take these two pieces and put them on here, and I want to clamp this down. I can put them there that hold it in place. And now I got it so I can hold it there. And in all reality, this thing is actually grabbing fairly well, just like that. Because at this point, I'd say that's grabbed it pretty good. So I quickly went from using the clamp with this rubber tubing from 
the closed position, getting tension to an all, red, all the way out to six inches to give me some tension so that I can hold one hand and set this in place with the other hand so that I can finish tightening it up one-handed. You know how sometimes with these clamps it's hard to do? That's why I said. I think this is a better idea to step up from those silly little rubber bands. And you can always figure out another way if you needed to to get more tension on here. You can always find a way of just going around in a circle like that and sticking it back in there. And that's going to give you a certain amount of tension. So, but what makes this thing work so well is the hole is about 64th of an inch bigger than one quarter inch. And when I did the tubing, I put it through the hole and then I put my pre-made dowel, a little shorty with the, uh, with the tip on it, with the pencil tip. And I push that up on there. Make sure you get that on there far enough so that when that hose is pulled back through the hole, the taper of the dowel goes into the hole. And then when that rubber hits the outer ring of that hole, and it starts to pull, it's actually trying to pull that dial into the hole too. So that will never pull off of there, uh, per se, as long as you got that up on there far enough. In this position, that will not do that. So this is a quick, easy way to get a spring-loaded F-clamp. And I actually like this. I've been using this for a couple, well, well, a few days. It's not bad when you have to have only one hand to put a clamp on. Instead of using a quick disconnect, I can actually still use one of these too. So... It's kind of a nice thing. I think this works much better than rubber bands, but you might give it a thought. But you can see, OTB thinking, and I've been thinking about using that tubing. What got me started on surgical tubing is I was thinking about using this to replace metal springs. Any place I would take a metal spring that has to pull, you could do that with this just as easily, I think. And maybe even last longer than the uh, spring might under... You could definitely get more travel from using a surgical tube for the spring load than you would from a metal spring. So I think it has some possibilities. Uh, so I've been playing with surgical tube, doing some, all sorts of weird things, trying to see if I can make it work. So, uh, so that's one of the other things I've been doing. Uh, my Xylus vise, I talked about this a couple times. I made these generic jaws for it but I gotta I'm gonna make some revamp it's not the way I want it to work so I'm still working on this but I have the idea of how I want to do it when I get it I think you'll really like the modification where you can actually replace these jaws not only with the plastic ones that come with it but I'll have some nice wood jaws that you can make almost any way you want and get it up do all sorts of things so I'm gonna show you how to make attachable jaws for your Silas Spice. And it'll be a big improvement on that thing with the new jaws that I've got designed for it. So, but again, it's not done. Most of my focus for the last couple of weeks has actually been on electronic products. And don't ask me why, but I just keep going back to it. I've been playing. I had this idea of the, the Ryobi battery and making a charger, a 12-volt charger for it. You can buy one, but trying to find one for under $50 delivered... Good luck with that. It they they do cost you quite a bit, um, and I think I can actually make one for less than fifteen dollars. Now, Buck, uh, one of my viewers, and thank you, Buck, for the idea. He's the one that got me started on that idea, and what I did was, uh, you want to be able to take this charger put it in the car and carry your batteries and then while you're in the car you need to charge them up you can get this out and charge up and I think I can set it up to charge at least two batteries maybe three all off of one plug-in when I get done here so I've been working on it he's the one that turned me on to a this is a buck boost converter DC to DC and it's a 5 amp uh, 60 watt but he is he uh, Buck is the one that kind of turned me on to how to do it this way to get the charging and it does work I've charged several batteries with it, but I've noticed one thing that if I charge the battery up using this It doesn't It doesn't give you that full this battery is fully charged But you can see where it is now if I take this over and plug it into the regular charger And it goes to a couple of flashes and then it goes to solid green means it's fully charged then I take it out then the thing will register full. 
So there's something I have to do with this charger, and I think I know what it is. I think you got to put a ground from the positive here with a resistor, a certain size resistor to touch against this negative post so that that tells the status bar what the status of the battery really is. So uh, I, I got this idea from a guy that was also does a lot of Ryobi battery projects. Uh, he built a solar generator for his batteries. He built, he took his supercharger and turned it into a big six battery battery bank, a couple of things like that. Uh, but he's, and I've, I've been trying to get him to answer me about this resistor idea of touching this other terminal so that it will then let you know that you're actually charging this up. And I think what it'll actually do is it'll flash this thing and rotating flash as it gets fully charged, fewer lights will be flashing. They'll stay solid is the way it looked like the way he had it done. So I think maybe I can incorporate that into my battery charger. And it shouldn't be much if that's the case. It looks like you just use a resistor, which will cost you about a penny for one of those. So it's not going to be a big cost. But I am looking at that. So now the way it actually works, the way I did this, is I took this particular DC to DC uh, booster uh, conver converter, and I got 12 volts coming in. I just put a cigarette lighter socket on there. Because when you go to your car and you want to charge it, that's what you're going to find you can plug into is a cigarette lighter plug-in. And the other end is just one of those little caps that George made for me. But you can make your cap however you want. So the only pieces you need besides pieces around the shop that you can find, like the wire and PVC pipe instead of this cap if you wanted to make your own, um, you're going to need to buy a cigarette plug-in. You need to buy a converter and actually what I found on the converters just so you know is I found these little fellas these little board modules it you got you can put bring I can bring the 12 volts in I have a um, potentiometer to adjust the voltage so I would adjust that to 21 volts on the output and I would put that in there I'll buy I'll also set in there a volt amp meter which is about two dollars this thing runs me about two dollars and it'll do three amps which is about what you want this thing would be perfect for that so if I put this with the voltmeter so you can monitor it as it charges up <clears throat> you can watch it charging up that way and you know when it's fully charged with, even with the voltmeter instead of using this this thing is about 25 bucks but it does a lot more than what this does this you just set once and then you can just keep it going so these but at two dollars a piece i bought uh either i think i bought six of them and that is what i wanted because i am going to take and i probably shouldn't talk about this but let's talk about i'm going to talk about it anyway um that supercharger that i had that's not working now and you've heard me say that's the one thing that i said that I really have been disappointed in ryobi about making but I saw this that one guy that put that made his into a battery bank. He gutted it all out, hooked it all up through the so all the batteries snap into it, and it looks very similar. He did very little outside difference to the case and turned it into a uh, power bank. So, but what I want to do is I want to turn it into a six battery charging system and battery bank, so I can plug them all in. I can take a wall outlet and plug it into the wall outlet and it'll charge up each one individually. Not like the supercharger does one at a time. I will be able to charge all six at a very low amperage rating so that I can charge them all up in a couple hours type of thing, I think is what I'll end up with. I'm still trying to figure out the voltage going in and how many amps that's going to take to charge six batteries at once, things like that I've been working on. But I also want to be able to have it unplugged flip a switch and now all six of those batteries that have been charging will also I'll be able to take now and draw the battery power from an outlet on the case so that it becomes a battery bank and I'll also put a small uh, inverter uh, DC to AC inverter on it probably somewhere around 800 watts as I think I can do with six batteries so or maybe even nine over 900 actually is about what it would put out. Can you imagine if I bought 
uh, six nine volt nine amp hour batteries Ryobi batteries you can buy them at nine amp hour now and if I bought six of those to put into that thing each one of those has like 168 uh, watt hours of capacity so that that's like 970 watts so you almost get a thousand watt unit out of these six Ryobi batteries that used to be the supercharger so I want to make mine so that I can charge them up I can put the batteries in it and it'll be a charger so I can charge the batteries up so if I need one battery I can grab it use it in the tool and put it back in there and keep charging it up I'm gonna be able to charge it from 12 volts and also be able to charge it up from 110 volts and when they're in there I should be able to also tap in I'll have a switch so I can actually tap in and pull off of those so it becomes a power bank I think to get all that into that little package would be kind of cool now I'm probably gonna have to modify the case to do that uh, when uh, this other gentleman that did his he the only thing that he you could see different on his was he put in uh, the inverter on the outside of the case but I'm probably going to cut the bottom of my case off and mount it onto some kind of bigger platform to give me more space on the underside of the whole thing. And it'll still pick up from the handle. You'll see when I get it done. I have a vision of what I want to do. But I want to take and take that thing to a step further than anybody ever has. Because I've seen two or three guys that have taken that charger and just turned it into a big power bank. And that's what I was going to do. But I've decided I think I can do both. Make it so it has its own built-in charger too, so that all six batteries charge up at the same time, and all six batteries can be drained at the same time. If you got to use one of the batteries, you can unplug it and run it off of five batteries instead of six without any problem, and use this battery in your drill or whatever it is you want to do. So it'll make a great power storage area, and then if you want to charge it up, you can even take and turn on. I'll be able to turn the charging, I think, on and off on each one individually. So if I need to use one, then I put it back in to bring them all back up to charge. I may want to charge that one back up individually. I'll be able to do that. So it should have its own monitoring system. Like I said, there's lots of things I want to do with it. But in, it's just going to be the supercharger. I think it will be the OTB supercharger when I get done. So... That's my plan on that. So I've been kind of stuck on this um, <clears throat> electronic stuff instead. So I'm sorry I haven't been doing much woodworking, but I did just do this BS joint thing. I really thought this turned out really well. And the jig just is so easy for me to use now. So when I'm doing any kind of box, and if I want to pin it, a butt joint, it's easy to do and quick. So stay tuned. <clears throat> I'm not done with that. And now you know what I'm kind of working on now is right now, this is what I'm actually working on. Also, I want to make a, just real quick, because I probably shouldn't, but I really got to tell you. Also, my metal cabinet here that has the slide-out tray, you've seen this thing. Let me, give me one second here. Let me see if I can pop you up. We're going to go for a quick move. And let me put you right here. And turn you around see this is my cabinet I sit right here at my bench but off to my right is this metal cabinet that has this pull-out tray on it oh that's heavy it has a pull-out tray on it so that this becomes my work surface I do my soldering here I also want to put I'm going to take this door off I made for this open cubby hole on this cabinet and I'm gonna take this out I'm gonna put a power uh, supply here so I can run DC power and have the leads and everything so that when I'm working on something here doing that I can do soldering and volt supply voltage so a good power supply right here would be awesome so I thought about putting it in the back there but I think I'd like to leave my soldering things in this area and then I'll put my power supply here with all my electrical stuff and these drawers down here. Anyway, I originally was just using this for my regular tool storage. And what I, my last thing I really want to do is take this really cool cabinet and turn this thing into uh, turn this thing into a uh, a really nice electronic center is what I want to do. 
stay tuned for that. That's the other thing I've been working on. So as you can see, I, I've got a lot of this OTB stuff going. A lot of it has to do with electrical because this is my end thing. After I figure out how to do the charger and do some of that stuff, then I want to build my own power bench power supply, I think, rather than buy one. I haven't decided that for sure, but uh, if I make my own or whether I buy it, it's going to have to fit in that little bit cubby hole right there when I get done. That'll be a perfect spot for that to be, for me to use the wires and be able to see what I'm doing and have this stuff up out of my way while I'm using it. I think it'll be awesome. So, uh, stay tuned for where that cabinet's evolving. That's the other project. So, I went over 30 minutes and I didn't want to go over 15. So, let me say goodbye. I want to thank you. If you stayed to the end, I'm impressed because <laughs> I did ramble about a lot of stuff. But these are some of the ideas I really have been thinking about and what I've been working on. If you have any questions about this, any suggestions or ideas about any of these things, uh, let me know. Uh, because that always gets me thinking off about other things. But uh, I hope to bring some of this stuff to you in a finished, so, uh, in a finished way so that you can take advantage of in your shop once I get them perfected. But like everything else... It just starts real slow and I figure these things out make it better and better as I go along that's just the way I do things and I, that's why I call that OTB thinking <laughs> so I'm always looking for a way to improve it anyway thanks for stopping by um, my hats off to you if you did stay if you have any comments questions observations ideas I'm always looking for ideas just leave it down below I do read them all and I try to comment to them when I think there's something I can contribute back in the comments. So, or if there's a question, uh, I try to answer those very quickly too. So, uh, anyway, leave your comments. They're very much welcomed here. Uh, if uh, you learned something here, you like this video, hit that like button before you go. It helps me know that I'm doing something right. Most importantly though, please, if you would come back again because I'm nowhere near done rambling or anything else. Thanks, and we'll see you guys again very soon.